think about your own life, you don't forget about those people back there. You look very well. Um, oh, that's good. Uh, right. Right. So we're, we're tickled, and now I'm scared. Yeah. Sit still, because now we're going to yeah. move on. Yeah. Well, when I was in the borough building, yes. so for that, and then so they're working on funding and grant opportunities for that. Um, that will go in. Yeah, we're all good. And Brad will be And she's figuring it out. She's trying to weigh all the options. She's trying to get the name. Right. 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 But then there's a pretty good grant opportunity with Kiwana. So we're figuring it out. Not positive. We're trying to figure out what they just got with the $20 to one in Michigan. But I'm going to be very, 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 so I don't foresee us not getting the grant I would think that's a great start. Oh, my God, help. Yeah. How come I'm not Because we'll be doing 20 more. I would like to go to the next one. Maybe one I can do. Yeah. Several librarians, Lisa, because I recognize them. <laughs> I thought you weren't available. Oh, okay. Did you get it solved? I mean, he looks like an accountant. I think that's Brian. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, so does Dennis. He looks like an accountant. <laughs> well, you got to say this about Denny. He always dresses well. Yes, he does. He really does. He really does. And he would have been, he would have been perfect in the 70s. <laughs> Even in the early 80s, you know, a lot of people in the early 80s right. wore, wore, wore yeah, from the 70s. Mm -hmm. Holy cow. Do you guys have your personnel? Uh, no. Dave, I, I haven't seen a copy of it yet. No, I haven't. Look at this. Thanks, Lisa. Mm -hmm. Get a minute. All those new hires, that's what we like to see. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Oh, good. They got a caseworker. That's a very good. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Do we have anything going on for a need for a meeting, Lisa? I mean, a, an operating meeting that you know? We're pretty good. Good. Okay, excellent. Very good. <laughs> you kidding me? He, he never calls me. He's going. Well, it is 1030, so. Okay, sure. All right, let's uh, call the meeting the order. Start with a pledge to the flag, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Well, thanks, everybody, for being here. Nice packed crowd. I know we have a lot to get through. Uh, We'll uh, get, get through it as quickly as possible here. Uh, first thing we need to do is approve the minutes from March 12th. We have March, a mo motion to approve. And second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Uh, next item up is the bills. Uh, Rob. All righty. General fund $6,668,958.66 and 66 cents. Hazmat, $557.06, 911, $18,348.36, 2559 $2,559, Domestic Relations, $539.60, and Children and Youth, $558,402.54, for a grand total of $7,249,000. $365.16. Thanks, Rob. Any I'll questions? Make, I'll make a motion that we approve the bill list as presented by Controller Edwards. I'll second it. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Just give us a second to sign this, folks. The next item up is uh, personnel changes. Uh, happy to report we have a number of new hires. We have a uh, clerk typist two in the CYS office, excuse me, effective today. Um, actually, I apologize, yesterday. Uh, full-time corrections officer effective yesterday. A full-time corrections officer effective today. Uh, DC three, and this is a temporary, I should, that should definitely say temporary, mm -hmm. DC three in the election department, uh, effective today. Um, the fiscal assistant in CYS effective April 1st, part-time um, department clerk three in the controller's office uh, effective April 3rd, and uh, department clerk two in the prothonotary clerk of court's office effective April 8th. We have nothing under separations, retirements, or transfers, and we have two FMLA requests, uh, one for 12 weeks effective 3-1, and then another one intermittent effective 3-26. Any questions, or do I have a motion to approve the personnel report? So moved. And second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. So that's taken care of. Uh, public comment. So anybody who's on the agenda, we'll, you'll, you'll have your... Is there anybody for an, any other public, public comment besides those items? Seeing none, we will move on. We have nothing under old business. Uh, first up is... Uh, Rob Dickinson with 4-H and uh, the Pennsylvania, the uh, PSU extension uh, to proclaim March 13th through the 23rd as Pennsylvania 4-H week. He's back in the back. So. Yeah, thank you, Commissioners. We have members of our King Council from Clearfield County here. If they could briefly introduce themselves as well. So uh, if you want to stand up, folks, and go in order from one to the next. To introduce yourselves. Do you, do you want them to... Talk a little bit about team counts or anything like that? Or? Well, whatever, whatever you would like. If they're going to say more than just introducing themselves, for the people watching on camera, we would prefer they come up so that everybody could see them. But if they're just going to stand up and introduce themselves, that's totally up to you. If, I, I know that they're prepared to talk a little bit about 4-H, if that would be appropriate. That. Whatever. Okay. The floor is yours. Okay. Hello everyone, my name is Sophia Laden. I'm 15 years old and I'm from Coalport. Uh, I am the president of the Clerkville County 4-H Youth Club and I'm the secretary of, of Clerkville County 4-H Teen Council. I've been in 4-H for about eight years now and throughout this time I've met many, many of my best friends. I've learned a lot about leadership, I've learned a lot about public speaking, doing things like this, and 4-H has done a lot for me. 
most importantly, it's helped me to figure out that with my future career, I would like to be a veterinarian. And through 4-H, I've met contacts that will help me with this in the future, and it's given me many experiences for this. Thank you. Thank you. We need veterinarians, so I yes. hope you stick with that. Yes. Yeah, we need them around here, so please come back to Clearfield <laughs> County when you're done. No problem. Good morning. Uh, my name is Casey Brothers. I'm 16 years old. I'm from Lady Joe's, and I'm the president of the Harmony 4-H Club. 4-H uh, is what initially got me into raising animals and taught me a great deal about agriculture. I also want to acknowledge the uh, diverse amount of skills 4-H uh, teaches people. Um, for me, it built many of my skills, such as confidence, friendships, uh, um, help others. Uh, life skills, um, financially it helps you, and uh, most importantly, uh, responsibility. It teaches you a great deal about res responsibility. 4-H uh, is such an amazing opportunity for all of us. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Hello. I'm Mariah Brothers. I am 18 years old. I've been in 4-H for 10 years. Starting 4-H at a young age has helped me uh, develop skills such as being outgoing, kind, and confident. 4-H um, has helped me with my leadership skills and it's helping me pursue my career in education because I like to teach other members of what I know. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Janice Gilliland and I've been in 4-H for eight years. I am the vice president of the Clearfield County Beat Club. 4-H has done so much for me. I've learned so much through 4-H and had so many great opportunities to go so many places and meet so many people. 4-H I found was key for me in terms of learning more public speaking skills and meeting people, making so many connections in the agricultural world and going to different shows all across the state including farm show and other various jackpot shows and just it's a great way to be involved in agriculture and make a difference in the community. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's it. All right. Do we have a proclamation? All right. We do. <coughs> So, whereas 4-H is America's largest youth development organization, supporting nearly 6 million youth across the country, and whereas 4-H has helped 133 youth in Clearfield County to become confident, independent, resilient, and compassionate leaders as they learn by doing, 4-H is in Pennsylvania is delivered by Penn State Extension in rural areas, small towns, and cities in all 67 counties of the Commonwealth to more than 77,000 youth ages 5 to 18. Whereas 4-H Youth in Pennsylvania is served by a network of staff and more than 6,000 adult volunteers who engage in mentor youth and learning activities and hands-on projects and topics such as animal science, civic engagement, STEM, and health and wellness. Whereas Pennsylvania 4-H Week showcases the incredible ways that 4-H inspires kids to achieve and highlights the remarkable 4-H youth in Clearfield County who work each day to make a positive impact on those around them. 4-H's network provides youth with opportunities for leadership, development, career exploration, problem solving, friendships, community involvement, passion, and purpose. Now, therefore, we do hereby proclaim March 13th through March 23rd as Pennsylvania 4-H Week throughout Clearfield County and encourage our citizens to acknowledge and celebrate 4-H for its valuable service and continued efforts to empower youth with a foundation of success for a lifetime. Do we have a motion to approve that a proclamation? So moved. Uh, second it. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Well, very good. <clears throat> and um, if you guys would like to come up for a, a photo, we're happy to have you. Thank you. Whoops. Rob, we want to say what a very poised and well-spoken group of young yeah. people you just... Uh, Fantastic. Yeah, they're doing brought great. Brought to our attention. I said to the 4-H the, uh, uh, members that I did nine of these last year, and then I did, I'm did i doing nine of them this year, and by far, hands down, these folks knocked it out. Yep. Very mm -hmm. proud of them. I definitely agree with that. <clears throat> Well, it's, a, it's a long meeting. You're certainly welcome to stay. If you've got other things to do, we won't, we won't be offended if you leave, so it's up to you. Um, thank you very much.
Item number two is proclaiming 20, April 2024 is Volunteer Appreciation Month, and we have uh, Dennis Biancuzo here. Brilliant minds of our future. I'm telling you, I was just saying to Lisa, <clears throat> I wish I could speak like that. I'm, I'm old and have to have things written down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the memorization is probably the best part, right? Yeah. <laughs> Um, as, as we said, I'm Dennis Bank, who's the Director of Business Development for Mature Resources Area Agency on Aging. I'm here today to reintroduce the commissioners and this community to Mature Resources Area Agency on Aging's uh, Volunteer Center of Clearfield County. For more than 30 years, our agency has provided countless hours of managing the Volunteer Center, from assisting county nonprofits and programs to seeking volunteers to maintain a volunteer database, Mature Resources. Mature Resources is on top of it. <clears throat> Founded and together, we are a force that transforms Clearfield County. Volunteer Appreciation Month is a time to celebrate volunteers as well as inspire volunteerism around the county. Volunteers are the heartbeat and strength of this community, and we celebrate them all month long as we are calling on people throughout the county to act, because we know that every act of service builds a more connected community through April, lend your time, talent, and passion to making a real difference in our backyard and causing a ripple effect around the world. We can find meaning and reward by serving some higher purpose than ourselves, a shining purpose, the illumination of a thousand points of light. We all have something to give, a quote by President George H.W. Bush, founder of the Points of Light. In 1989, President Bush spoke of a thousand points of light of all community organizations that are spread like stars throughout the nation. Quote, we will work hand in hand, encouraging, sometimes leading, sometimes being led. We will work on this at the White House and in the cabinet agencies, and I will get the people and programs that are brighter points of light, and I will ask every member of our government to become involved. This year, Mature Resources is celebrating and creating the Golden Rule Lightkeeper Awards, Volunteer Awards. The Golden Rule Lightkeeper Awards recognizes the community's volunteers to go the extra mile and help the community become a better place for all residents. The Golden Rule Lightkeeper Awards is going to be this community's highest level of recognition for deserving volunteers. This year our awards categories are youth, youth group, adult, adult group, and what we are calling the fabric of our community, a lifetime achievement of volunteer service of more than 20 years. Nominations are due by 5 p.m. on April 15th and are being expected, or sorry, accepted on the Trover Resources website at mraaa.life. We will be holding a recognition luncheon at the Copper Fork on April 26th from noon to 3. Community members may register on our website for the luncheon also. Award sponsorships are also available on our website. All right, <laughs> and, and uh, before I read the proclamation, the one thing I do want to bring up that, that I know you're working on and Mary Beth's working on and also the CRC, uh, there's going to be a volunteer fair on April 19th at 4.30 over at the, uh, the fairgrounds. So uh, rain or shine, it'll be indoors this year. So we, we certainly encourage anybody. Uh, you, one thing you said that I totally agree with, everybody has something to give. So maybe you don't want to work with this group, but maybe another group catches your eye. We're hoping to have a very, very wide variety of volunteer organizations there. So great opportunity to see what's out there. Uh, whereas the entire community can inspire, equip, and mobilize people to take actions to change the county. And during this month, all over the nation, service projects will be performed and volunteers recognized for their commitment to service. Volunteers in Clearfield County have undertaken responsibilities to promote the general welfare of the county. In providing these services, volunteers have demonstrated a spirit of personal concern and wholehearted willingness to help others. Experience teaches us that government, government by itself cannot solve all of the social problems. Our, country's, our county's volunteer force of citizens is a great treasure. Our volunteers are most deserving of appreciation and thanks. Mature Resources Area Agency on Aging Volunteer Center of Clearfield County will celebrate our county volunteer force with the Golden Rule Lightkeeper Awards. Now, therefore, we, the Clearfield County Commissioners, do hereby proclaim the month of April 2024 as Volunteer Appreciation Month in the county and urge our fellow citizens to show appreciation and to volunteer throughout our communities. Do I have a motion to approve that? I so move. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. All right. Thank you, Dennis. 
Pablo. It's your favorite thing to do. Oh, one more. Did you get it? No. Oh, you're good. Oh, okay. Sorry. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, next up uh, is uh, National Library Week, April 7th through the 13th. Thank you, County Commissioners Lisa McFadden. We appreciate the opportunity to be here today to talk about what we do. Um, we are very blessed to have a county where three libraries are represented, which is very uncommon, as you may know. I am Lisa Kobo. I'm the director of the Joseph and Elizabeth Shaw Public Library. To my right, I'm uh, Rebecca McTavish. I'm the director of the Dubois Public Library, which serves the city of Dubois and Sandy Township. And I am Kayla Clark. I am the Clearfield County Public Library. We operate the Kerwinville Branch Library as well as your county bookmobile. So anything not served by them are bookmobile service. Mm -hmm. So we're here to say that we have the county covered, um, essentially in literacy, bridging the digital divide on a regular basis. Um, we like to always convey the message that we're more than books. We're evolving. We're um, meeting the growing needs of our county, um, both academically, electronically, uh, and, and so forth. So we are pleased to be here today. And um, there's a lot of exciting news happening for, uh, for us. Last year, Du Bois received a Keystone grant. This year, the Joseph and Elizabeth Shaw Public Library received a grant which was the fifth largest given in the state so and, and of course the amazing work that we have our Clearfield County Public Library reaching the far reaches of our county and those that are underserved being able to get into the major major cities of Dubois and Clearfield so they're trekking out there and, and whatnot so we're pleased to be here we're pleased for your support and we encourage everybody during National Library Week to stop by if you don't already have a library card make sure you come down and get one we do online services. Uh, we have lots to be excited about. Uh, look for the coming expansion of the Joseph Elizabeth Shaw Public Library. Uh, and we just uh, met with Clifford Borough to be putting in a story walk in the Upper Whitmore Park. So lots of exciting things, but this is an opportunity for us to recognize our library workers, our patrons, uh, the growing families that are, are coming into our library. One thing I, I, I would like to jump on a little bit is you talked about, you know, bridging the digital literacy gap and, you know, with the changes coming in broadband, one of the big pieces that both the federal and state governments are pushing is not just getting the lines out, but actually making sure people can use the technology that's available. And I know that we've been talking at, at the state level, the county commissioners, about how libraries are a, a crucial piece to that. Because um, you, you are more than just books, and I think people need to realize that. So. Yes, we, we really are more than just books. So many times they, you, they walk in and they go, oh, do you, what do you have? You have books here? And we'll say, we, we have books, we have Wi-Fi connections. The Du Bois Library daily has multiple people in the parking lot, in the building, working through the Wi-Fi connections on their own business work. I know uh, Shaw is the same way, and so is Clearfield County. The bookmobile itself reaches all of the communities it shares resources between us so there's now not just multiple library cards in the county you can use your one library card from shaw at the dubois library at the clearfield county library at the bookmobile so on and and so we're all connected together and we're trying to make those upgraded connections as well i know the dubois library is looking at upgraded internet connections which in our rural communities is difficult because the you know the faster speeds the more connections are not out there so you know we're looking at all the projects available to be able to make more resources available to everyone i will say that broadband is we don't have cell service most places mm -hmm. we take the bookmobile which means we don't have internet so like we go to like this we don't have internet uh, our lona so we're having to old-fashioned Mm -hmm. and come back and do it at the physical library, that's very important for the bookmobile. So we're in full support of that. Yeah. We're working on it. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, too, and I, I don't mean to belabor it, uh, and I don't know if this is a good thing or a bad thing, but I will notice, and I'm not sure about Dubois, uh, but I know with Shaw, 
um, Shaw Library also almost acts like a little extension of the courthouse because folks who are representing themselves are constantly, you know, there's a lot of that going on now with our court system. The folks take advantage of the uh, computers and electronics at Shaw Library. Uh, I'm assuming Dubois also. We are the same. We have many, many people who are coming in to download <coughs> judicial forms to, you know, work through their yeah. cases. I have um, some people that are regularly in there, you know, working, you know, you over here and you know they're working on court cases and I'm not sure from what aspect. Yeah, and I but, think... But it really is, you're right. Yeah, and I think you folks even, Lisa, you even have almost like a little, you've what developed an almost an structural, because structural find, manual or something for We them. do find that on many occasions we have um, grandparents who are seeking emergency custody. They come to the courthouse, they're given a, a form of all the necessary paperwork that they need to acquire, which means downloading them from a computer. Many of them have um, lacking the ability to print those off at home or the knowledge of computers. So they come in and, in, 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 instead of just actually saying, here's a computer, here's access and whatnot, we actually have a binder of all the yeah, most common <laughs> forms requested by the, the community. Um, those uh, emergency custody papers, divorce papers, um, and so then we're able to just make simple copies for them and then help them with their, their copies and send them on their way without little stress and, and whatnot so that they can get back to the courthouse and get those files. And so. it's the same with the tax forms. The library used to be the biggest place in our communities for people to pick up tax forms. And of course, they're not sending out tax forms like they used to. So we, on a daily basis, have people coming in looking for those IRS forms, all of the little bits and pieces. And so we we all do what we can to streamline that process. We even give them the tax forms for a, um, a lower cost because we're printing them anymore. So um, it's anything we can do to support our communities in any way possible, um, no matter what anyone's circumstances are. We are there for whoever comes into the library. And we'll just add with one last note, as you are probably very much aware, uh, April 8th is the solar eclipse. I know Dubois has um, solar eclipse we glasses. Still have solar we eclipse still glasses. do too. Stop in. Um, 335, I guess, is the pivotal viewing, viewing time. We've been seeing a lot of people stopping in and, and getting them. Just another way of educating and, and just kind of providing yep. good service to people. Don't look at it without the glasses. Absolutely. Don't do it. Absolutely. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very much. We'll, uh, <laughs> we'll get some picture taken, guys. We got the proclamation here. Yeah. Whereas libraries offer the opportunity for everyone to connect with others, learn new skills, and pursue their passions, no matter where they are in life's journey. Libraries have long served as trusted institutions, often the heart of their cities, towns, schools, and academic campuses. Libraries are an essential public good and fundamental, fundamental institutions in democratic societies, working to improve society, protect the right to education and literacy, and promote the free exchange of information and ideas for all. The Literacy is Power initiative highlights how libraries and staffs encourage literacy in basic information, civic and social, health and financial, which contributes to greater personal and community success. Libraries adapt to the ever-changing needs of their communities, developing and expanding collections, programs, and services that are as diverse as the populations they serve. Library workers have worked to expand, expand fluency in the digital literacy skills needed to navigate the online world which, in which the 21st century exists. Libraries are accessible and inclusive places that promote a sense of local connection, advancing civic engagement, and shared community goals. Getting a library card is a financially literate action. Libraries pay, play a pivotal role in economic development by s providing resources and support for job seekers, entrepreneurs, and small businesses, thus contributing to local prosperity and growth. Libraries, librarians, and library workers are joining library supporters and advocates across the nation to celebrate National Library Week. Now, therefore, be it resolved that we, the county commissioners, do hereby proclaim National Library Week April 7th to 13th, 2024, during this week, and really at all times, we encourage all residents to visit their library and celebrate the adventures and opportunities they unlock for us every day. Do we have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All righty. And don't forget, Thank summer you. meeting starts June 1st. Absolutely. There you go. Oh, 
Oh, that's all right. Don't worry about it. I'll just send you I appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much, you. ladies. Thank you just have a good day. Thank you. All right. And under the proclamations, last but certainly not least, April is Child Abuse Prevention Month, and Kara McGarry is here to speak to that. Focus. So we do our nurturing parenting program, our triple P, which is positive parenting program, and our parents as teachers. Our main focus at our agency is prevention. As we know, there is a ton of child abuse that's been all over the news lately, um, all, all the time. It's even within our own county, and we are wanting to prevent that with everything that we have. So Amanda is going to pass out little r blue ribbons for everybody, as April is. National Child Abuse Prevention Month. Um, we Thank ask you. that on April 2nd is we want to turn the state blue. So please wear blue on April 2nd in order to help prevent child abuse. And then, as always, if you see child abuse, you know child abuse, please report it and get help for these kiddos. I will say that, uh, you know, we had Commissioner Tatum. She was here with us, and, and that really raised, I, I, I'm sure I speak for Commissioner Sobel, our awareness of, sure. of the seriousness of this problem, right? I mean, obviously she didn't talk about individual cases, but we could just see the workload and her trying to work with the CAC and here and, and the various pieces of it. Um, and it. It's a shame, right? I mean, obviously it's terrible that we even have to have this proclamation, but we do need to raise awareness. And, and, and I couldn't agree more about the prevention piece. I mean, we spend a lot of time in government patching after thing, bad things have happened, but the more we can do to prevent in, in so many areas, the better off we'll be. And a lot of it comes mm. down to lack of education within the parents for parental level. So if any any way we can help with parent education, please let us know. We can self-refer at any time. So if you know someone that is needing help, have them call us and we can self-refer. And it can go out. And we, we go to you. So it's like we go out to anybody who needs it. They don't have to come to us. Um, we work closely with the county in order to find best services because at the end of the day we need to prevent child abuse but we also want to keep children in their homes at the same time. So that is why education and prevention is super key when it comes to raising the young people in our area. Well, I thank you very thank you. much for that. Yeah, um, we'll read the proclamation in here. Whereas child abuse and neglect is a complex and ongoing problem in our society affecting many children in Clearfield County, Whereas every child is entitled to be loved, cared for, nurtured, feel secure, and be free from verbal, sexual, emotional, and physical abuse and neglect, it is the responsibility of every adult who comes in contact with a child to protect that child's inalienable right to a safe and nurturing childhood. Our communities are stronger when all citizens become aware of child maltreatment prevention and become involved in supporting parents to raise their children in a safe and nurturing environment. Effective child abuse pre prevention programs succeed because of partnerships among families, social service agencies, schools, religious and civic organizations, law enforcement agencies, and the business community. Now, therefore, we, the commissioners of Clearfield County, hereby proclaim April as Child Abuse Prevention Month in, in the county and call upon all citizens, community agencies, faith groups, medical facilities, elected leaders, and businesses to increase their participation in efforts to support families, thereby preventing child abuse and strengthening commu the community in which we live. Is there a motion to approve that proclamation? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. All right. Thank you. And while they're signing, thank you for the work you do. I know this it's not easy, but it's necessary. And every every bit of work you do helps take some of the load, hopefully, off of CYS and, and some of the other organizations that are struggling with this problem. All right. Ladies, want to get your picture taken? Yes. All right. 
Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So item number five, consider intergovernmental agreement for talk groups with the Commonwealth of PA and the PA State Police. Dave McClure is here to talk about that. Uh, probably that way. That way people at home can watch you. <laughs> uh, just request the commissioners consider an intergovernmental agreement for talk groups between the county and PSP. Basically for uh, interoperability. When we switch to our digital police frequency, PSP has our frequency in their vehicles and at the, the barracks. It's in punks and boards and Clearfield. This will allow us to have their frequencies for the three barracks in our consoles with the, each barracks being able to patch our frequencies together. So it's a lot safer. If PSP has something going on, our, our dispatcher will be able to hear it if somebody's heard it. If we even call us, and then we'll be able to patch the, or patch the two frequencies together. Okay, so I mean, and, and for the general public, PSP has their own dispatch, correct? Separate. This will just allow, yes, cooperate. And, and we work with Punxsy Dubois and Clearfield Barracks. Is through it. That's the three that cover the county. So we'll be able to have all three of their their frequencies in our um, consoles. And I know we've done radio upgrades. This this agreement isn't for an expenditure. It's just the agreement to allow the cooperation. Yeah, it allows them to put that in our consoles. Uh, okay. And it's not going to cost the state's paying for that, and then it's for interoperability, but it's not. That's what I thought. I just wanted to, that yep. was a clarifying question. Yep. Um, any other questions on this? Mm -hmm. uh, motion to approve. I will make this in the form of a motion. I'll second it. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. All right. Okay, stay right up here, Dave. Yep. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, hazardous Materials Response Fund Grant. Uh, I'll just ask the commissioners to sign the, the paperwork for the grant. It's a three-year grant. Mm -hmm. This is just the third year of the grant. We applied for approximately $21,000 worth for planning and training for hazardous materials. This year we put in for all training for to do all the hazmat classes. We never know what we're going to get until they award the grant. Um, The signatures for this just state that the Hazardous Materials Emergency Response Preparedness Report, which was approved in 21 at the first year of the grant, by signing this, you just agree that that's um, that, and then we will spend all the funds that we get for Act 165, which we make sure that we do. Well, and with all the accidents on 80, I think... And we all agree that hazmat training is really important because you never know what's going to spill up there. Yeah, and that's so. why the third year they put in, we decided to do mostly training for the responders and stuff like that. This will allow that. Makes sense. Do we uh, have a motion to approve that grant? So, so, so moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Here. Okay. And then after. Mr. Winters signs. Item seven is to consider appointment of Sierra Clark as treasurer and Autumn Bloom as secretary to the CYS advisory board. Um, I think they're both very qualified to be on that board and in those positions. I will make that in the form of a motion. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. So, the first and then number eight is one of two items uh, regarding unions. Uh, this one is more straightforward. This, um, once again, and, and I know we had an item last meeting about one-time um, funds in the form of a grant. But that still leaves us with the problem of hiring and retaining people upstairs. It's, they've been shorthanded. Um, and... Frankly, and, and I'm just speaking for myself here, I, I, since I've gotten into this job, all I've heard is, well, you know, people going into that field know they don't make that much, and it's just the way it is. And when, you know, we keep losing people, we keep losing people, I, I, I personally, I'm finally like, why does it have to be this? It doesn't have to be this way. So um, we, we are under um, a provisional license with the state. I know they're working hard to get off of that, but one of the things that we can do is to make more attractive starting wages um, 
and so we talked to them and the agreement is very simple um, and it, it says both parties acknowledge the emergency situation that exists in CYS due in large part to extremely high incident reporting rates, low staffing, difficulty recruiting and retaining staff. In light of these unprecedented conditions and in order to address the situation, the county proposes to increase the hourly rate both for new hires and existing hires for by $3 for all caseworkers, effective April 1st, 24. And then just for information, this will move the starting rate from $18.50 to $21.50 per hour as of that date. All other provisions of the current contract remain in force as agreed. As a reminder, that contract expires December 31st, 2027. So that is the proposal. The union has unanimously ratified it. It is, it is up to us now. So I don't know if you gentlemen would like to say anything about where we're at. I, I'm going to oppose it, Dave, and the reason being because I think we have, we had previously worked out an agreement voluntarily with the union. Uh, we reopened it in August of last year, if I remember correctly, to increase the hourly wage by approximately $3, which I think puts us in a range that's, uh, I, I think is comparable to other counties. It's not the highest, but it's certainly not the lowest. I personally think that where we need to spend, I, th I think we're gonna lose them no matter what the, no matter what the wage rate is uh, because, because of the difficulty of the job. I personally think the money needs to be spent changing the circumstances and the conditions maybe is the word for it under which they work. In other words, we've talked about perhaps some of the, the subject matter they deal with could be handled by a service provider. Uh, I think there is, I, uh, I, think we've, I think we do intend to uh, obtain, for example, like a home health care organization, watch any children that have to be housed in the offices so that they do not have to, or most of them do not have to, so they have a little bit more free time. I mean, so, so they're, I know they're very busy, but that, that at least reduces some of the additional stuff that gets piled on them. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I um, we've created the position of case aides. I think that was a wise thing to do. It relieves them of some of the, re the road work that they're stuck with doing in addition to the, the specific work of, of uh, dealing with the, the, the uh, casework that they need to do. So. Um, I, ju I just think, I, I, I just think, um, I think we've been very generous. We've tried to be very generous with the salaries, uh, and also I think you just, you just, you just don't keep reopening a, a, uh, a contract you've negotiated. I think you wait till the, the uh, term is up, and then you, then you take a look at it again, and then anything's, anything's fair game in that situation. So. Well, I'm going to look at this. I mean, there, there are problems. The, the CYS jobs. They're, they're not a desirable job. We, we cannot commend our people enough for the work they do there. There are some issues we'd like to see addressed by the state, but we've also seen how quickly the state moves, especially in the current climate, which is not at all. We need to, and you'll see this again in the next MOU that comes up, as Clearfield County, we need to treat our employees more of an, as an asset than a liability. It's, you know, Compensation going up everywhere in the public sector. I understand, you know, opening c contracts does set a precedent, but you know, this is something we need to do to be competitive. And I want the people that work for Clearfield County to be proud to work for Clearfield County, and you know, be well compensated or adequately compensated for what they do. There's traditionally been public sector jobs didn't pay quite as well as the private sector made it up in benefits. The current job market has completely changed. I, I think this is a good move. Like I said, we need to we need to value our employees as assets and not liabilities to the county just by the merit of a paycheck. And and I have tremendous respect for Commissioner So He's been doing this a long time. He and I have had a lot of discussions on these kind of topics. So I know where he stands. I think he knows where I stand. Um, I appreciate that he's always trying to, to watch the, the bottom line. The one thing I do want to say in response is if we out, if we outsource it, we're going to pay some contractor, you know, probably the equivalent of 40 or 50 bucks an hour. It, we're spending the money either way. I'd rather spend it on, on employees that we can have here. But I, I do understand his point. Um, is there any other discussion on this item? No, 
and as as Dave just brought up, this is not this is not a a feud amongst us. Oh we, no, we no, have, I don't want anyone to we, think we that. May, we may we may have a, <laughs> yeah. a a philosophical disagreement mm -hmm. on how things could be done, but mm -hmm. all three of us work together in what we think is the best interest of Clearfield County, and you know, there are some tough decisions to be made mm -hmm. right now, and you will see that we we will put the time in behind the scenes and make sure we, we come to the right solution. Yeah. No, I, please, I'm not, this is not an emotional reaction. No, no. On my part, I mean, it's a philosophical and, and just, uh, uh, Reasonable men and, can and disagree. Doing, about uh, it. just being in the position I've been in for the number of years I've been in approach to it. Well, um, can I have a motion to approve this? I will make a motion to approve the Memorandum of Understanding the, as regards to CYS. And I will second it. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Nay. All right. Motion passes two to one. All right. On to item number nine. This is an extension of a contract uh, between the county and the uh, CCAPE or the probation officers. Um, and it has several items to it. Um, and I'll go over them one by one. Uh, the first item is an hours of work and overtime. All we're changing is that their, their on-call pay goes up a little bit to $450. I believe it was $400 before, but I'm not sure. Uh, Article 2, or the second item under Article 10 for vacations, um, it reads, now it'll read one working day per month for all employees having less than five years of service. And the issue here is that before, and really as it stands now for most uh, employees in the county, the first two years they get six days of vacation, which frankly isn't very much, and um, it can be tempting then to misuse sick time and other time, and I, I just think, especially when you talk about, you know, very difficult positions like probation or, or others, we want people to be able to recharge, so um, I personally didn't have a problem with that. Article 3, now this language is really exactly the same as what we did with CYS before. New hires are going to have a higher deductible um, after April 1st. That'll be a $750 individual, $1,500 family. Uh, they'll also pay twice as much as current employees in premium share. Um, and, and again, that, that is just to match the language that's in the CYS contract now. And then the, the wage piece, um, the starting base salary right now is $30,000 in that unit. Um, it'll be effective 4-1, it'll be $35,000. Um, and then it'll go up $2,025, um, and then another $1,026, and another $1,027. So on 1-127, the starting rate will be $39,000. Um, and then... The same exact amounts are, are added for each increase um, so that in each year, so for example, they're, they're going to get, they were supposed to get 1500 in a salary increase this year. This year. Instead, it will be 6500 which is the same 5000 that you see in the starting rate. And then the 25 increase is uh, 2000 and then a $1,000 increase for 26 and 27 the contract was to expire at the end of 25. It is now extended through 12 31 27. And that's, that's that. And, and again, I mean, I don't think it's quite the burnout job it is upstairs, but you're talking about people who have to have a college degree. And when I got here, we were starting them at some, give or take $25,000 a year. It's, it's almost impossible to, to make it work with student loans and such. Um, and they're having trouble finding people. That's the bottom line. So, um, and as Commissioner Winters said, we're reacting to the market. The market says we new hires care less about benefits and more about salary. So it's it's incumbent on us to react to that. I think. But, gentlemen. Well, again, I'm going to be a no. Um, again, I philosophically, I don't think you, um, I, I don't think you get in the habit of doing do-overs when you've negotiated a contract. This isn't one that was forced on the, on the bargaining unit by an arbitrator or a court. Uh, secondly, I'm aware of at least one, I, I know it's, it's a tough market out there, but that's a national problem, and I'm aware of at least one person who's expressed interest in the past few weeks of, of working for a probation office. Um, 
under the original terms of the agreement. Um, I do, uh, it, and, and the other thing too, I think this one, I believe this is expired, the original agreement expired in 2025, which is a little bit of, which means we'd be talking about it uh, in a little bit over a year. So I don't think we're, we would have been that far away from uh, starting the negotiation process for a new contract anyway. And I think, like I said, I, when new contracts come up, I think anything's fair game. So certainly a lot of the terms and conditions in there, I don't view unfavorably. I just think it's a little too early to be talking about them. That's really, really my position. Oh, and I'm, I'm gonna, we're just going to differ on this. I think if we can extend this contract, avoid the negotiation, drawn out negotiation, potential arbitration. I, when I ran, part of this precedes me being here. Over the last couple of years, the county has changed the, the benefit plan, which resulted in a significant savings to the county. And it was my understanding that that savings would be passed back to the county employees over time in the form of wages. I, we need to be competitive in the marketplace or we, we can't be lagging around with one department 25% understaffed, one department 50% understaffed. I see this as a way to honor that commitment to return those savings to our employees and to uh, avoid possibly a prolonged contract negotiation coming up in 25. I, I will be for this. Yeah. It's the only thing I could say. I do agree that has been part of the schematic behind it is, is realizing savings in the benefit package that could be passed on to the employees. Absolutely. However, at least my speaking for myself, my understanding was never be 100% would be passed on the way of wages. It would be certainly in higher wages, but also savings to the taxpayers too. We don't want to forget they're the ones that come up with the money that we're spending here too. So, I mean, you, you don't have to spend every cent you save. And that's all I'm trying to say. Uh, and once again, we can respectfully yeah. disagree yeah. on points of view. Sure. Well, um, can I have a motion to approve this um, contract extension tentative agreement? I will make that motion to consider the memorandum of understanding in regards to probation. I'll second it. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Nay. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Um, do we want to do that um, now, or we still have the audit? Do we want to do the audit first, or? Oh, the, hey, Heather said she can. Read this is the really audit. fun part we've okay. been waiting on here. Okay, so um, we have a gentleman here from ZA to talk about the 2021 county audit, which we are all happy to in, uh, report <laughs> is complete. Thank you. We've, we've been awaiting your presence. <laughs> Hi, I'm Brian Crucial. Um, I'm the partner on the audit. I'm from John Kosciuszko. I'm out of the Pittsburgh office, that's who performs the audit. But yes, I am here with the 2020 financial, 2021 financial statements um, and single audit. Um, they are complete. They have been filed with all the um, necessary entities that need filed with. Um, as far as the results of the audit, um, it's an unmodified opinion. That's the best audit opinion we can give you. That means we believe the financial statements are materially accurate. We believe there are no adjustments needed to these financial statements. Um, to be presented in accordance with generally accepted accounting principles in the United States. Um, <clears throat> we did have, um, obviously got off to a slow start with this one. We had some turnover, um, but we're, we have that in the rear view mirror for us. Um, we are ready to go. We're probably over, I would say over 60 to 70 percent done with the 2022 audit as well. Um, we're just, <clears throat> we have a, some cleanup stuff to do, um, and I think Rob's probably annoyed with Carly's emails um, about <coughs> how much she bugs him, um, but <laughs> just doing her job. Yeah, mm -hmm. but uh, and I need bugged. So. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, she's. <coughs> we have most of that done. Um, so she's, and anything she needs, she follows up pretty uh, regularly. Um, as far as the single audit goes, so 2021 was the first year of the American Rescue Plan money. Um, so the ERAP program was your major federal program. You guys passed that on to the community action agency. Um, that is what we tested. Um, we had no findings in the single audits. So we don't have any control weaknesses, any compliance findings, no issues with how anything's administered here. Um, we didn't find any issues 
as far as your internal control processes go, um, like in accounting, you're facing turnover, like every industry in, in America, you're facing turnover. Um, so that <coughs> has changed the processes, changed the names in the processes in a couple of places, but nothing major, nothing that we would say, okay, you have a segregation of duties issue or you're not adequately, adequately staffed to have a proper control structure. Um, we don't have anything like that. Um, if we did, it would either be in that single audit report or we would have had a separate letter that we submitted to you guys, a management letter that said, okay, we've identified these areas you could improve on. Um, we didn't have any of that with your control structure. Um, as far as the operations of the county, the results of the operations, your general fund fund balance is about $9 million um, at the end of 2021. That's healthy. That's your general fund budget's a little over $20 million. So you have, <coughs> give or take, 45% of your budget um, basically there available to incur future increases in costs, which you're going to have over the next couple of years. Um, once we get to 2022, we'll probably see increases in costs just because and costs increase generally every year anyway. Um, they're usually union negotiated, but now more so than ever, costs have gone up more than you would have been expected from on a year to year basis. Um, but you do have a healthy fund balance, so you're not worried, it's not negative, you're not worried about that running out over the next couple years. Um, I hope, has everyone, everyone has a copy of the financial statement, did anyone go through and have any questions on anything? I did go through it and I had a few questions that I bounced off Rob and I mean, um, we're not accountants, but I, I was satisfied with what I saw. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. The one thing I do want to bring up in, in kind of relation to what you said, and I think this is an important point for the public, and I know we keep hammering it, but it really does matter. Our fund balance at the end of the year has to carry us, usually through at least the best part of April. We still don't have tax dollars in yet. I know people have their tax bills, but that... Nine million or eight million or whatever it ends up being for a given year has to pay all these bills that Rob reads off. Um, I know you know we our fund balance is pretty much depleted by now. Yeah, it's close. So it's not like that money's just sitting there and we don't have a use for it. That allows us. That's our winter storage to get through until the tax money comes back in. And if you don't have that understanding, it can seem very, very odd to have that much fund balance, but. It's not extra. I mean, no, certainly it wasn't at that point. Now, we, you know, we do have a little more now with the ARP funds that we have designated for different projects, but we run a pretty lean operation all in all. Now, yeah. Chairman Glass brings up, that's a very important point. Just because there is money left at the end of the calendar year, that is not a surplus. That is prudent financial management, to, especially in municipal government, to carry yourself through the first quarter Otherwise, you find yourself incurring the cost of tax anticipation notes, notes and it, it's just good budgeting to do that. Yeah, every county needs, and every every governmental agency will tell you, you need a fund balance. You can't just get by on, okay, we're going to spend what we bring in. That's, everybody needs a fund balance. It's whether you want to call it a rainy day fund, whether you want to call it for future projects, whatever you need it for, but it needs to exist. And if you ever needed debt and you didn't have fund balance, the, you'd pay, your interest rate on your debt would be through the roof. Uh, especially given it. current market situation. Yeah, exactly. So Thank you. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. And the other thing the fellows are mentioning, a lot of times it's these lean months that we have our heaviest billing. By that I mean that is the that's the coldest time of the year. That's when our utility costs are the highest. You know, you get these 20 below weekends and things like that, uh, which we have, you know, we have to heat these buildings through. That happens in January and February. That doesn't happen November, December. Secondly, there's a lot of uh, entities that we deal with. Their billings come at the beginning of the year. And any increases in expenditures we have to make, they take effect at the beginning of the year during Typical. these these lean months. So, so that's the other thing, too, folks need to understand. It is a very lean operation because a lot of times our, our uh, biggest expenses happen during the first half of the year, particularly in the first uh, quarter of the year. So uh, uh, we we do try to make sure we've budgeted enough to be able to cover that and take care of that. Well, in the, in the entities we fund, like, clearly ahead Absolutely. in the airports, yep. I yep. mean, they don't wait till we get our taxes. I mean, it's January 5th, and typically we have a very polite letter saying, will you pay us now, please, because yeah. they're in the same boat we are. So, yeah, um, yeah he, that great point that mm -hmm. we, we get hit up for a lot of our, fun, our outflow in the first yeah. quarter, yeah. second quarter. Yeah. So. 
And the alternative is, like you said, a tan or a trans. Which we, um, which is terrible. <laughs> yeah, so. then you're just going to pay, especially now, you're going to pay a very high amount of interest to borrow money for four or five months. Hmm. <sighs> Any, anything else on the 21 um, audit? Nothing on the 2021 audit. Um, hopefully I'm here in a month or two. We will look forward to that. That'll, that'll, that'll be, be lovely. <laughs> yeah. Yes, we we at one county you will eagerly be anticipated. Oh, yeah. So uh, we, come on, the <laughs> others are eagerly anticipated. Uh, okay. I'm assuming that'll be, look good, but we know. But I don't want to. But <laughs> we'll have it have theme music for you. <laughs> yeah, so, yes. <coughs> Anyhow, thank but, you. Thank you very much yeah. for your presentation. Yeah. And um, if we haven't already, and I, I looked at it, I, I can't recall if we did, but if we haven't already, we'll post a copy of that audit on the website. I, I haven't looked. That tells you I haven't looked at the website lately. I apologize. But um, yes, we, we do want to be very transparent about these things. Thank you very much. Yeah, no problem. Um, and we have one other item that we need to address that's not on the agenda. And a, we apologize for that. We don't like to do this, but we have an emergency situation that I, I believe our solicitor will address really quickly. Yes, we do. Um, this was an item that came up very late um, after 4 o'clock yesterday, right in the kind of the early mornings as um, we started working today. There's the a placement of a child in CYS who is in need of care, um, which resulted in us needing to enter into a medical staffing service agreement. And I'm going to, for those reasons, um, not to go into the privacy of it, but I do think it does fall within the exception um, under the new Act 65 that we can amend the, gen uh, amend the agenda. So I would first ask for consideration to amend the agenda for the consideration of a medical staffing service agreement with Angels of Care Pediatric Home Health. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? We're good. And with that, with the agreement, um, as I said, this is specifically um, for one child. That doesn't mean um, other services may not come up where this is used. It is a one-year agreement. Um, there is a 30-day termination. Um, one note, it does automatically renew, so I will work with Director Lamadou to make sure um, that we're on top of that if we need to make any modifications or termination depending on the needs of this. Um, the only condition on it is because of the timing. It does have an indemnification pr um, provision, so we will have to have it approved um, by our insurance carrier. Um, so it's been approved as to its form. Um, after my review this morning, if you are in agreement with it, I would just ask that it be pending that insurance approval, and that'll go right over to Mr. Lomo as soon as we finish today. And, and the only thing I'll say, and I, I don't want to get into the privacy, but we don't like doing <coughs> emergency ads, but this kind of plays right into what we were talking with CYS. If we didn't do this, we'd probably be putting our staff in a much harder position because this contract is relieving the burden that would have been carried by our staff potentially having to, to care for a child again, which we've had in the past. Um, we had that situation in the past is what I mean to say. So it's really, really important that we get this handled. Um, and with that, uh, is there a motion to approve it? I will make a motion to approve this pending insurance company indemnification. And I will second that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank I you. Thanks, Solicitor Bozovich, for her quick efforts. As she said this came up yesterday, actually after business hours. Not liking to change an agenda or add an item, but th this was a, a quick effort to put this together to hopefully mitigate what is not a good situation. Agreed. Thank and you. you. And she was probably with three kids. Was three, though? Right? Three. We got three. She was probably, <laughs> it was probably on the steering wheel of her car. She was driving. Don't, kids no, no, no. We, drive, we believe in safe driving. Always safe driving. Always safe driving. driving. Always but of course, she her has, husband's an insurance but she agent. Come on, we can't two, say things like she that. She has two additional like eyes that. in her forehead, so she's able to watch the, we, watch we, the road we, and read at the same time. your efforts. Uh -huh. And just as an update, as a follow-up, and, and I do apologize, I wasn't present at the election um, board meeting, but however, um, after that meeting, the Supreme Court did affirm the Commonwealth decision as far as that petition of um, Joseph McBarca that I believe was uh, discussed. Yeah, we were going to talk about that, so oh, please okay. go ahead. No, please, oh, so it, fire it was away. Confirmed. So um, they have ruled that he is not to be placed on the ballot. Um, so with that, we are able to finalize our ballot. Um, I, I did speak briefly um, two elections, and we are hoping that all of those tests, you may have a further update on that. Um, the ballots will be sent for printing, so we'll get those out as soon as possible um, so everybody has any of the mailings that they need to return. Yes. Um, so to that end, we, and, and we, we did have an election board meeting on Friday where we had made the determination that we were going to push ahead with the ballots as of, I think, 2 p.m. today, regardless of whether we got a decision. 
and then, so we started to create the ballots and we tested the ballots and that was all fine. And it's literally the moment we got done testing the ballots, we got the word that, yes, he had not been allowed to be on the ballot, which is the way we tested them. Um, we had a certification to that effect. So um, that's good. So we were able to send them to the printer immediately. I don't know if they're back yet, probably not, no. but they should be back any day now. And then we'll be able to start processing the mail-in and absentee ballots. Um, we know we're behind, but so is every other county. This was completely out of our hands. Um, so we did the best we could, and I think we'll be able to get them out in, in short order now. And it will avoid a lot of confusion yes. had we had to send them out with the, and, you know, kind of make any corrections to that. Well, that's um, what we wanted to avoid. That's why we waited as long as we did. The last thing you want to do is send them out and then have to send another one out. That would have been terrible. And um, just keep in mind, Friday's a holiday, so if it's not arrived, um, you know, they are coming and we'll update it. The yeah, I wouldn't expect like anybody to get ballots until mid-next week. I mean, it could be earlier, but I wouldn't anticipate that. And then two, two dates that the election office wanted us to really make sure we we talk about the last day to register to vote before this primary is April 8th. So that's coming up. That's Eclipse Day. Should be easy to remember. That's the last day you can register. And then the last day to request a mail-in or absentee ballot is April 16th. Unless you come down and vote it here in person, which you can do, we strongly recommend you don't wait that long because you need to have make sure there's enough time for the mail to operate and get it out and back. Um, so you can register online. You can register at our election office. But if you choose to vote that way, we recommend you do that soon. The polls, of course, will all be open on the, the 23rd, and you're welcome to vote that way, too. Um, did I miss anything on elections? Because I, I know we had a lot there. No, I think okay. that's the, the big thing. Well, one more thing on elections. I have recused myself from being a member of the election board for the 2024 cycle, as I am involved in a campaign for a U.S. congressman. So it will defer election questions to Dave and John in the and Kathy Senate. Hughes who will be Kathy Hughes now. has been appointed to serve on the elections board of elections for 2024. I did not want any perceived or perception of inappropriate so I have recused for this cycle. And we appreciate that honestly. I mean, I think it's good. I, I, look, he'd have done a great job, but I think it's just good to mm -hmm. take any of the question out of it. Yeah. Um, yeah, and and Kathy knows what she's doing. She's been she's done this before. Yeah, I agree. Appearance of conflict can be as damaging as as a conflict, and so you just want to take yourself out of the out of the situation entirely. So, what else do you have? Anything? No, I'll, I'm going to have a further update on the um, Zimmerman lawsuit. Um, we had discussed that a few weeks ago. That we were waiting on service. There have been some preliminary objections filed. That case is moving along, but nothing um, really substantive at that point, at this point. All right. Maybe maybe next week. Anything else for the good of the order? Hearing none, motion to adjourn. So, so no, oh, second. second. Oh, whatever, pick. <laughs> <laughs> I'll All make a motion that we adjourn at 11.30. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Tristan, before you run out, Just about an hour, like let's said. go out front and get a minute with our new x-ray scanner and the three of us. And we got new x-ray scanners at each building. This you can use as a filler whenever you need. Yeah.